Hello, PsychU community, and thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the webinar on the role of trauma and PTSD in eating disorders, food addiction, and obesity. And I'm really happy to be here today with our speaker, Dr. Timothy Brewerton. Dr. Brewerton is an affiliate professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at the Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston, South Carolina, where he is also in private practice. He is the Director of Clinical Outcomes and Research for Montanito and Affiliates, Distinguished Life Fellow of the American Psychiatric Association, Distinguished Fellow of the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, Founding Fellow of the Academy of Eating Disorders, Founding Member of the Eating Disorders Research Society, Former President of the Eating Disorders Research Society and the South Carolina Psychiatric Association, and he's also the author of more than 160 articles or book chapters and editor of two books. He has been instrumental in exploring the overlaps between trauma, PTSD, and eating disorders, as well as promoting integrated treatment approaches for eating and related comorbid disorders. He is board certified in general, child and adolescent, and addiction medicine, and he's an NIMH intramural research fellow in the Laboratory of Clinical Science. He completed medical school at the University of California, San Francisco, and completed his residency training at Tulane University School of Medicine. So thank you so much, Dr. Brewerton, for being here today. I'm really excited about this webinar because this is really the first time that we've covered this content on PsychU. So if we go to the next slide, I'll introduce myself. So I am Dr. Heather Davidson. I'm a medical science liaison for OTSCA. So as you can see on the screen, this program is paid for by OTSCA Pharmaceutical Development and Commercialization Incorporated and Lundbeck LLC. So Dr. Brewerton is a paid consultant. I am an employee of OTSCA Pharmaceutical Development Commercialization. So with that, I would like to turn it over to our speaker for today, Dr. Timothy Brewerton. Thank you, Heather, very much. Uh, it's a great honor to be invited to present at PsychU. Today, our objectives are to briefly overview the overlapping symptomatology across eating disorders and food addiction, to describe the three E's of trauma, a model developed by SAMHSA as it relates to the pathophysiology of eating disorders and others, to understand the association between trauma history and the prevalence of eating disorders, food addiction, and obesity, to elucidate the mechanisms by which early life trauma become biologically embedded, a very important and uh, rising concept, and to highlight the need for an integrated approach in the treatment of eating disorders that includes trauma-focused therapy. So let's start with an overview of eating disorders and food addiction. There are four different categories listed in the DSM-5 for eating disorders. Anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, binge eating disorder, and OSFED, or other specified feeding and eating disorder, what used to be called uh, EDNOS, or eating disorder not otherwise specified in DSM-4. Food addiction is not listed in the DSM-5, but is an emerging area of focus due to the similarities in symptomatology, etiology, including trauma and PTSD, and treatments. Uh, you can see that there are a number of characteristics that overlap between all of these uh, uh, syndromes, disorders. Um, restriction of energy intake uh, is not characteristic of food addiction. It's not part of the Yale food addiction scale. Uh, it's not measured, but uh, the presence of restriction can in fact uh, provide false positives of food addiction. So that is one caveat there. Um, there are a lot of other things that are still not clear about the definition of food addiction. Uh, David Wiss and I re just recently published a paper on separating the signal from the noise uh, and how to separate uh, false positives from false negatives using psychiatric diagnosis. Food addiction is a clinical entity, though, nevertheless, that is well recognized within the spectrum of disordered eating. Uh, as you can see on the right column, there has been a, an explosion of research interest in the concept of food addiction. Uh, it was originally coined 
the term food addiction was, was originally coined in 1956 by Randolph, who associated it with addictive drinking. However, the phenomena went relatively unexplored for many years until the last decade, when there was serious scientific interest progressively mushroomed. And parallel to this scientific inquiry, food addiction has become a uh, useful and defensible clinical entity with marked implications for policy, practice, and research. Much of this work has been facilitated by the development of the Yale Food Addiction Scale, uh, which was developed by Ashley Gerhardt and Associates and published in 2009. The, the YFAS has shown good test, retest, reliability, and validity. And now there is a YFAS for children, as well as the YFAS 2, which is based on DSM-5 criteria for substance use disorder. Uh, basically, we are talking about the ingestion of highly postulated foods, which are postulated to act via uh, very similar if not same mechanisms as drugs of abuse in the brain, whether illicit. Uh, food addiction uh, may develop as a maladaptive coping mechanism to self-medicate dysphoric states that occur in individuals who have a history of trauma, much like the self-medication hypothesis of substance use disorders. Uh, I've written about how food addiction may be used as a proxy or a substitute or indicator of the severity of both bulimia nervosa and binge eating disorder, uh, complex trauma history, severity of PTSD and its symptoms, the intensity of psychiatric comorbidity, as well as medical comorbidity, and the severity of obesity and combinations of these. We know that trauma is implicated in substance use disorders, eating disorders, food addiction, and obesity, as well as other major psychiatric disorders and medical disorders. Um, you probably have heard of the ACEs studies, uh, first published in 1998 by Felitti, uh, showing that a high number of ACEs led to a higher risk of disease that caused uh, early death uh, and was associated with all of the leading causes of death in the United States, uh, as well as severe obesity. So we also know that uh, trauma, PTSD, ACEs history uh, is linked not only to substance use disorder and obesity, but food addiction, as well as eating disorders uh, along separate uh, research lines. And then, of course, uh, if you have an eating disorder, one can uh, either go be uh, go up and be overnourished, or go down or normal weight and be anorexia, have anorexia nervosa, for example. SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, put out a trauma and justice initiative in 2014. And they said, quote, trauma is an almost universal experience of people with mental and substance use disorders. The need to address trauma is increasingly viewed as an important component of effective behavioral health service delivery. Uh, this is after uh, some decades of work showing the uh, veracity of early life experience, childhood trauma, uh, life uh, events that have been traumatic leading to PTSD and the role that they play in a variety of uh, mental disorders and substance use disorders. It has also uh, springboarded the uh, approach of trauma-informed care that uh, is applied now or should be applied, in, in, I would argue today, to the treatment of all of these disorders. But today we're focusing on uh, food addiction, eating disorders, and obesity. SAMHSA also uh, talked about the three E's of trauma. Many people are confused about what trauma means. Is it simply just an event? They propose that it's best defined by all three of these E's, event or events, experience of events, 
and the effect that uh, the experience of those events has. And this can vary tremendously from person to person. Um, people, diff people have very different experiences of the same exact events. And some people may develop adverse consequences, uh, most notably PTSD, and others will be more resilient and won't. Or there may have some other effect. And we know that trauma is a risk factor for all of the psychiatric disorders, practically. What age you are, uh, if you're 5, 25, or 55, uh, that will determine, to some extent, your experience of the events. Certain cultural uh, beliefs and uh, prior beliefs, in particular, that may be culturally bound, will also influence how one perceives the event uh, and what effects it may have. 